And I said, the reason it's necessary to explain this is because if you don't understand the laws that govern these two realities, you will never manifest the fullness of God. And so I said, for example, when you come into existence, there are three laws that govern existence. Number one is the authority of God. Number two is the wisdom of God. And number three is the will of God. So if you are not functioning within the context of the authority of God, the wisdom of God and the will of God, even though you are walking in the realm, you are not really existing. That's why the Bible said in 1 Timothy 5, 6, it says, him that liveth for pleasure is dead while he's walking. Because as far as God is concerned, it's your operation under his government, by his wisdom, fulfilling his will, that defines your existence. And I said, in addition to that, in order to also give expression to life in its fullness, there are three other laws that also governs life. And I said the three laws that governs life are the laws of energy, the laws of consciousness, and the laws of light. And I gave some hilarious um, illustrations here. I can say come, and come will mean one thing in English language, but in the language of energy, it can mean a lot of things. Come can mean I'm angry with you. Come can mean you are in trouble. Come can also mean run for your life. You know, I'm seeing some officers here. I think they understand this better than all of us. Because in a civilian context, you can take certain things for granted. But in the military, command is life. There are certain commands that when you hear it, you are in trouble. You know, and why is this important? It's important because the quality of your life is defined by the purity of your energy. If you allow somebody comes into your context and defies your energy, your life will go down. And so if you know that energy governs life, you'll be careful the things that manipulate your energy. The words that you hear, the words that you allow to be spoken over you, the things that happen around you, all of these are designed to regulate your energy. And if your energy is corrupt, your life is corrupt. If your energy is wrong, your life is wrong. I keep emphasizing, especially when I'm talking to young people, that life is too spiritual to be taken for granted. Lots of persons open their spirits to secular music. And they say they are enjoying it. Just because there's a demonic intelligence around these songs that makes the reading to flow with a particular emotional chord does not mean it's beneficial. There are songs you hear that defies your spirit. You just hear these songs and lust overwhelms you. You hear these songs and fear hits you. You hear certain songs and you just turn into a violent disposition because they are trafficking energy. The demonic entities understand the wisdom of energy. They know life is regulated by energy. Everywhere you look, rays are being transmitted in form of pictures and in form of sound. The idea is to get in touch with your energy. They don't need to necessarily lay hold on, on you. But if they are able to touch your energy, they will violate you. And a man can be more corrupt just by the things he hears and sees than what he does. Because of the energy traffic. Life is governed by energy. And life is also governed by consciousness. What you are aware of is what determines your manifestation. You can be born again. And I'm so blessed by, you know, the words that we heard and recited this morning to charge our spirits. It, it goes much more than just saying some good or quoting some good scriptures or professing certain things. These words redefine our consciousness. As you say it, after a while you see it. And as you see it, it becomes your reality. That's how you build consciousness. You build consciousness with words. Because as you are saying it, you are creating another word. Some persons may, may have come in here down this morning, but after that word, after that continual energetic recitation, you will discover that you are lifted. And you are not just lifted, but something shifted. And you began to see from another paradigm. And because you started seeing from that paradigm, it will affect your day. Whether you like it or not, you have, you have recreated your day because your consciousness will be built into your experience. And then finally, we spoke about light, the kind of understanding you have and the kind of understanding you work with. And I said the reason this is important is because 
you can have all of God, but you may not manifest God. And so when we are discussing the fullness, we are not just talking about being in possession of God. We are actually talking about the extent to which you are able to manifest God. And what God has in mind is for every one of us to manifest him in fullness, in totality. In 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9, he said you are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. He said God's own special people called forth to showcase, to manifest, to unveil, to unravel the excellencies of God. So everything that makes God God should be on display when you collide with us. We are supposed to be theaters that reveal the glory of God. And until we come to that point, we have not really begun to live. But you see, it's not without a dynamic. It's not without a protocol. It's always been God's plan, but there is something we must do in order to work it out. You know, when God created Adam, he wanted Adam to be the reflection of God to creation. That's why he said in Genesis 1, 26, let us make man in our own image after our likeness. On the strength of this order of creation, he said, let them have dominion. That means the earth will submit to them if they are able to reflect our image and our likeness. But if they fail to reflect our image and our likeness, the earth will rebel against them. So the authority the man had was tied to his ability to image God. It was tied to his ability to reflect God. And so existence in itself will therefore be defined by your capacity to reflect God. If you are unable to mirror God, you are just there. You are not really existing. Your life is an impression. You can't make real impact. 